The good. The bad. The kind. And the menacing. Meet the neighbours who've carved out territories in our neighbourhoods. On the streets and in our nature spots. Millions upon millions of pint-sized organisms live side by side with the human residents of Singapore. From the heartlands to the jungles, these tiny residents live hectic lives that go almost entirely unnoticed. But when lifespans are measured in mere days and weeks, their every action is urgent. Here in the wild city's secret world, A new day in Singapore breaks with the arrival of the northeast monsoon. Strong winds and heavy rain thrash the city in the warm tropical air. It's the setting for some common and not so common scenes. Feisty minor birds wised up to these wet conditions a long time ago. The heavy downpour has sent flying termites crash landing into puddles. And the patrolling birds are cashing in. At this development site in the centre of the city, a band of squatters are getting fired up by the downpour. The ancestors of these banded bullfrogs travelled from Malaysia to Singapore a century and a half ago. They adapted to life in the city and have been here for so long they're considered locals. The bullfrogs usually hide in the recesses and drains around the empty apartments but the rain triggers a cacophony of croaks, signalling that love is in the air. The female bullfrogs are looking for the most attractive males to be mating partners. So the boys need to croak to impress. Sadly for these suitors, there are just not enough ladies to go round. and the Love Lagoon quickly descends into a watery fighting pit. Male frogs inflate their bodies, not to keep their heads above water, but to make themselves appear bigger and more threatening. But bulking up this way can make doing battle extremely difficult especially in the rain. Most of the blows don't quite land. But the stakes are high and this will be a fight to the end. Even if they risk looking like two angry beach balls in the process. In the end, the combatant with the most stamina prevails. And the lady frog picks a winner. After the storm passes, Singaporeans break cover and get on with their business.
At this MRT station, an urgent mopping up operation is underway. These paper wasps have been raising their young in a nest amidst the hustle and bustle of a busy street corner. Tiny larvae are cradled inside cells made of wood pulp. But now the lives of the young paper wasps are in serious danger if the adults don't act fast. The rainstorm has flooded the nest. And it's so heavy with rainwater, it threatens to collapse from the extra weight. If the nest falls, the precious cargo of baby wasps will be gone. So all the adults are teaming up for this emergency exercise. The wasps suck the water from the nest to spit it out. Six adults work relentlessly for an hour until one last droplet is drawn and the nest is finally drained. The crisis is averted. Left undisturbed, the wasps can get back to their helpful role of preying on insects that humans consider pests. As the rain clouds give way to clear skies, shoppers dash to the nearest or newest mall. And city gardens become the hunting ground of a fearsome predator. Praying mantids are the snipers of the insect world, patiently waiting for their target to come into view. Most mantid species only live six months as adults, so this female needs to feed to build up the strength to breed. The praying mantis has three small eyes and two bigger ones, giving it deadly accurate stereoscopic vision, similar to humans. The mantis is one of few insects that have this kind of vision, which allow it to judge the distance between itself and its next meal. Mantids are such voracious predators that hungry females will even cannibalize the male mantid during mating. Down by the bay, the super trees are a draw for tourists, but their encounters with some of the garden's most beautiful inhabitants may be all too fleeting. Butterflies drink nectar from flowers in the lavish gardens. On an island once famous for its big cats, this is the last of the tigers. the caterpillar of a plain tiger butterfly. It 
It has one job to do in its life as a caterpillar, and that's eat. Over the next few days, it will devour many times its body weight in leaf material. The caterpillar will need every bit of sustenance it can get to accomplish an incredible physical transformation. But that's if it doesn't become a juicy meal itself. The plain tiger caterpillar makes itself as unpalatable as possible to its predators. Its cells are laced with toxic compounds it sources from eating milkweed. Its tiger stripes aren't for camouflage either. They warn off predators keen to avoid a foul-tasting meal. So this fantail wisely goes looking for a more agreeable lunch, leaving the caterpillar to keep piling on the weight ahead of its metamorphosis. A new day is a buzz with commuters in the morning rush hour. Over the last two centuries, Singapore has transformed forests and mangroves into a teeming metropolis. Surprisingly, wildlife has continued to thrive in this urban setting. A swarm of hungry dwarf honeybees are hard at work early in the morning. They're building a new hive under the window of a shop house right in the middle of Chinatown. A scout bee has just returned from foraging. And she has good news to share with the colony. Her dance signals she's found a source of nectar, and the movements describe the distance and the direction to the food. The information becomes encoded in the tiny brains of the worker bees, and they head off in search of the prize. Over 100 species of bees are competing for food in Singapore. There's no choping of flowers, so the race is on. This time, the scout's directions were spot on, and the swarm gorges on a feed of pollen and nectar. Some of the pollen attaches itself to hairs on the bees' bodies. When bees visit other plants, pollen is passed onto the reproductive parts of flowers. This will develop into seeds which spread then grow into new plants, keeping Singapore green. And so the bees' food is payment for services rendered. It's an ancient form of trade, nurtured and developed over millions of years right here in Singapore. Bukit Brown Cemetery is at first glance a peaceful contrast to the bustling centre. It's the final resting place of almost 100,000 of the city's early pioneers. The last burial here was almost 50 years ago. And since then, nature has gradually returned to the grave sites. It's become a vibrant habitat 
And today, unsuspecting visitors share the grounds with an insect menagerie. Assassin bugs and a multitude of cricket species are out in force. The cemetery provides them with plentiful food and cover. Crickets have powerful jaws and will eat decaying plants, grass, fruits, fungi, seedlings and even meat. From afar, this patch of grass looks like a cricket haven. Up close, it's a minefield. Full of spiders. The web of the lawn wolf spider is deceptively beautiful. Bejeweled with raindrops, this garden ornament has been crafted with lethal intent. The spider waits and feels for disturbances on the web. A cagedid or bush cricket has landed in a whole heap of trouble. The cagedid is bigger than the spider and its powerful kick is enough to force a retreat. But this is the spider's turf. And as the catered becomes more entangled, the spider is emboldened to move in for the kill. The wolf spider restrains the catered with the help of long hairs on its legs. Then it paralyzes its victim with an injection of strong venom. The spider retreats with its prize. A catch like this will sustain it for weeks. In the unseen world of this wild city, the cycle of life and death advances at a relentless pace. The cemetery is also a nursery for an incredible diversity of insect life, including countless species poorly known to science. These praying mantis nymphs, just minutes old, are from a species that has almost certainly never been filmed before. Fresh from hatching, their bodies are still soft and their limbs weak, making them vulnerable to predators. They need time for their bodies to harden before they can venture off. So, in the warm air, they dance. To the human eye, their movements are a hypnotic show. But to a predator, their swaying motion helps them disappear into the foliage as they shift in the breeze. Even so, some of these mantid babies will not see the end of the day. Danger lurks around every corner and they will need every trick they can muster if they are to survive in the forest. Just like a new apartment hunter seeking a high floor, the praying mantids have eyes for the top.
from this vantage point, those that make it to adulthood will become deadly hunters in Singapore's forests. At the other end of the day, the city's residents head outdoors to unwind. Kent Ridge Park has many attractions for two and six-legged creatures. And these stingless bees have set up camp in a tree trunk. As the temperature cools, worker bees are returning home from hazardous foraging trips, laden with precious nectar and pollen. But their work is not done yet. There are over 60 species of stingless bee in Singapore. Compared to the orderly honeycombs of common honeybees, a stingless beehive is an utter alien world. These spectacular structures are made from propolis, a waxy substance the bees manufacture from the sap of trees. The queen bee gives out instructions by fanning her scent around the hive. She is the mother to every one of the bees here. Her larvae develop rapidly, fed on a steady diet of pollen by the never resting worker bees. More pollen is stockpiled in chambers for later use. Nectar is turned into honey in the bees' stomachs. Storing large quantities of honey is a safeguard for leaner times. But make one wrong move and the bees can be trapped in their own sticky food reserve. This worker won't survive his dunking. For bees, the sacrifice is simply the price of ensuring that the next generation carry on the legacy of the hive. At the iconic gardens by the bay, a steady stream of sightseers are missing out on one of nature's greatest magic tricks. Hidden within the foliage, a plain tiger caterpillar is about to undergo an astonishing metamorphosis. For over a week, she's been binge eating and now the dramatic changes written into her DNA are being switched on. She has secured herself beneath a leaf as the genetic instructions kick in. Her body begins to pulse as a remarkable transformation gets underway. Over the last few weeks, she has shed her skin five times. 
Now she's about to undergo her final molt. What's underneath is no ordinary skin. It's a shield against the outside world. A chrysalis. Inside this capsule-like chrysalis, the caterpillar's body will virtually dissolve and transform as the final and most extreme makeover occurs. Across town, a forest reserve attracts nature-loving residents keen on some exercise laced with adventure. They'd have to get their noses to the ground, though, to notice a termite army carrying out the forest's grunt work. From their base in a fallen log, the termites help break down rotten wood and turn over the soil. This recycles nutrients through the ecosystem, keeping the forests of Singapore lush and healthy. Every few days, a convoy must leave in search of fresh wood to feed the colony. And, unbeknownst to the jungle trekkers, the termites have chosen a hazardous route that takes them directly across the cleared ground of the walking track. It's all the more dangerous because termites need moisture. but they must also isolate themselves from the elements to stay alive. Their ingenious solution to cross this parched walking track is to build a tunnel. But the tunnel has been breached, leaving them stranded outside their nest. Time is of the essence. If the termites can't repair the damage quickly, much of the colony could perish in the tropical heat. It's a mighty task. But these little guys and girls are master builders of the insect world, mixing mud with saliva to cement their intricate structures. What makes their engineering prowess even more remarkable is that they are completely blind. Larger worker termites do the heavy lifting, while smaller soldiers are on guard to defend the construction site from intruders. They're armed with a potent insect repellent that sprays from the nozzles on their heads. Today, the termites are blessed with good fortune. They are barely touched by the scorching sun and cooler temperatures buys them the time they need to finish the job. Soon, they can get back to their main mission of ferrying food to their fast-growing colony. Up in the forest canopy, another bug is busy doing its best to convince everyone that it's not an insect at all. It's possible this species of leaf insect is only found in Singapore. By 
Imitating tree leaves, it's almost indistinguishable from the foliage it calls home. This kind of deception is known as mimicry, and it's rife in Singapore's insect world. But even a near-perfect disguise can be undone by the most astute of predators. Hornbills are making a comeback in Singapore after decades of absence. These avian predators have powerful binocular vision. The hornbill scans the foliage, looking for slight colour aberrations. The smallest movement, a leaf out of place. One wrong move, and the game is up. And this time, the leaf insect is on the losing side. It's a battle of strategy and wits, played out over millions of years. On a lower branch, a jade tree snail is oblivious to the sacrifice of its insect friend. Like all snails, its eyesight is poor. It can only make out shady areas or detect an approaching large predator. The jade tree snail is green by name and even greener by nature. They help protect plants from disease by consuming fungi from bark and leaves. As the snail feeds, it's wary of threats from above and below. Down in the leaf litter, an army is approaching. Giant forest ants grow to almost three centimetres in length and are among the world's largest ants. They live in huge colonies of up to 7,000 individuals. They survive largely on honeydew secreted by aphids and scale insects. But that's not enough to sustain this militia. They also need to feed on flesh. Today is a lucky day. The ants come across a windfall. A centipede has died. The ant army immediately mobilises to move the carcass. Using their powerful jaws, the ants dissect the centipede limb by limb. The dismembered carcass is carried piece by piece back to their nest. Nothing, living or dead, goes to waste in Singapore's secret world. With the coming of night, the denizens of the day rest, and Singapore switches gear. While diners across the city sit down for their favourite meals,
darkness-loving insects begin to prowl out of sight. A flat-back millipede craves for a dinner of decaying leaves. While spiders wait for a meal to come to them. They spin their webs in the early hours of the evening in preparation for a night's hunting. The St Andrew's cross spider can grow to over 10 centimetres long. This smaller one hasn't fed for days. A large bush cricket has become entangled in its web. The spider must move with caution around such enormous prey. It's well over twice her size. The bush cricket struggles to free itself and the spider needs to make her move now before it gets away. But the powerful cricket is too large for the web to hold and the famished spider is left to rue the feast that got away. In the nearby bushes, another bush cricket sheds its skin. Insects wear their skeleton on the outside, so as they grow, they must periodically cast it off. To reveal a new coat of armour beneath. As the old skin comes off, it blocks its airways. It cannot breathe until the process is complete. Finally, it's free. At this moment, it is soft and vulnerable. Darkness is no guarantee of safety. The bush cricket slips into the undergrowth to evade detection. Dawn will soon break and prompt a changing of the insect guard. This spells bad news for the St Andrew's cross spider, facing another day of hunger. Suddenly a moth lands in the web. This time the spider doesn't hesitate. She wraps her prey in a cocoon of fine silk that will become a death shroud. She airlifts it to a safe spot. Where she can settle down to feed at her leisure. A bright morning invites visitors into the forest. And the daylight reveals that wild boar have left their calling card. A pleasant surprise for this dung beetle. With specialised antennae, he can smell the droppings from far away. Dung 
beetles need to roll the droppings into manageable sized balls while it's still fresh. His future offspring will hatch inside and use it for food. He uses his specially evolved hind legs to move the dung ball. You can't muck around when your nest is on the wrong side of the road. Travelling in reverse, the beetle gets up a surprising speed. But when you can't see where you're going, the trip is an accident waiting to happen. Across town, Gardens by the Bay inspires and educates people to appreciate nature's wonders. Amongst the displays, a chapter is being written in the insect's secret world. After weeks of development, the plain tiger's chrysalis has now lost all its colour. About to reveal the fully formed butterfly within. Her wings need to expand and dry. So she pumps liquid through the veins in her wings to shape them. She tastes the air for the first time with her long proboscis. Like a delicate straw, she'll use it to drink nectar from the city's flowers. These new accoutrements are a spectacular last hurrah for this plain tiger butterfly. For her time in the city will soon end. If all goes well, she will only live for close to two weeks. Just long enough to reproduce. Time is precious, so she tries out her wings. The wings have set firm and are ready for flight. The plain tiger takes to the air across the city that birthed her completing another turn in the cycle that defines the secret world of Wild City, Singapore.